take a careful look at these two photographs. What can you see? Two women. But is there something you can recognize at first sight? Maybe something in terms of fashion? Both of them made an effort when dressing, and they both share an interest in clothes, but who of those two people dresses more usual and mainstream? Which person has a more unique sense of style? Is there an essential difference between the ways these two women dress? Let me tell you. The woman on the left is wearing a creative, thoughtful outfit consisting of a black suit which she bought in a vintage store and embellished herself, which also tells us more about her identity. On the other hand, the woman on the right is, in my opinion, a victim of the fashion industry. She's wearing an uninspired look consisting of a big Gucci logo on her sweatshirt combined with black pants. At the moment, there's a big trend in fashion. Logos and names of brands everywhere on garments. There used to be a time where the name of the firm that had produced a sweater, a bag, or a pair of shoes was hidden inside. It simply did not matter. This has totally changed. But an exception has always been famous athletes who put logos onto their shirts and athletic gear. For this, they are paid by their sponsors, and it is clear to everybody that this is some kind of advertisement. But with the logo trend, it's the other way around. People have become walking advertisements, and they even pay to do so themselves, as items with logos on them are usually much more expensive. Now, the logo is the thing. People buy something, just because there's a logo on it. So, what don't I like about logos? A lot, actually. I think it's a way of manipulating people and putting them in some kind of uniform which takes away their individuality. The way people dress has always interested me. For me, it's a kind of language, a way of expressing yourself, something that makes life more interesting when you see people on the streets. My mother has always bought fashion magazines, which I enjoyed reading, and I've always accompanied her to fashion stores, where I would watch her and give her advice. With my grandmother, we would sometimes sit in a cafe and watch people passing by. I guess this is how my interest for fashion came about. And then, one day in November last year, we had an art project in, in school. We were supposed to choose our three topics, of which I chose urban identity, and then take photos related to this topic. I immediately thought of taking photos of people on the streets of Berlin and the way they dress, since I think that fashion is also a special way of communication. So, in a certain way, I believe that street style is part of the city's identity. A short time after, I decided to establish a street style blog on the internet called Street Talk Berlin, together with a friend of mine. As I've already mentioned, the fashion industry is all about logos at the moment, and I honestly think that this logo madness is somehow harming our brains. And now you're thinking that I'm exaggerating, which I am, of course, to make my point clear, but I do believe it destroys our creativity since wearing those logos and owning all of those Gucci bags has nothing to do with fashion. It's about social status and proving that you have the ab ability to spend money. I have to admit that I am not an exception and that I also own a few items of logos on them. But then I think it's just strange how logos have become so important in our society. How could something crazy like this even happen? And social media plays an important role in this madness as it represents people with such lifestyles as our role models. Like the Kardashians, for example, whose only live content is to be looked at and admired by us while getting paid. 
Did you know that Kylie Jenner is paid around $1.2 million for a single post on Instagram? This is just insane. And keep in mind that she posts a photo almost every single day, usually showing herself in extremely tight clothes, bragging about her wealth and her luxurious life. And I bet you've all heard of their strange reality show, where they show their real lives, of course, full of drama, which was all written by screenwriters. If it were not for us, the Kardashians would be just normal people with money, because the truth is they have nothing special to offer, and certainly not in fashion, since they get dressed by professional stylists every single day, and then take credit for their looks, which aren't even that fashionable in my view. There are many young fashion bloggers with the same ideals who are nothing but boring clothes with many logos. These people call themselves influencers, and this is how they make their living, by attending fashion shows and parties and wearing the newest trends, which they get for free. These people are supposed to shape, shape our fashion styles, honestly. But when thinking of fashion, we cannot only think of it as a term for chic skirts, bags, and shirts, as well as of which shoes would match a certain outfit. It is also a gigantic industry, manipulating us to buy the newest trends, turning everyone into robots who all seem to want the same things, more or less, producing clothes in large quantities by hardworking people in poor countries and harming our environment. This eager desire of everyone wanting to be part of the global fashion wave and the fear of being last season is a huge threat to our planet. Shopping for clothes has become a hobby, leading many people to buy low quality clothes, which is just basically future trash, to wear once or twice on average and then throw away, creating tons of garbage. Scarce resources such as water and cotton are wasted and in 2015, the textile industry emitted as much greenhouse gases as shipping traffic and air traffic combined. And here's another shocking fact. Up to 20% of the industrial water pollution is due to the production of clothes. Isn't that just frightening? We need to be more open-minded about fashion and use it to tell stories. But how can you actually dress more individually and express yourself with clothes. These are a few ideas. First of all, you should not get affected by the craziness of the fashion industry and try not to always stick to the newest trends. Another idea would be to go shopping in vintage stores where you can start to get inspired by the 80s or 90s, for example. Or you could just take a look at the clothes in your parents' closets. Maybe you can find something useful. You could also get inspired by other cultures and countries, just as I do when I meet new people on the streets for my street style blog. You could also keep an eye on buying ethical fashion, which is a new concept marked as socially good, planet friendly, and animal cruelty free. Last but not least, you should try to buy high quality clothes and timeless clothes, rather than buying new clothes every single week in a fast fashion store. Just do it as Vivian Westwood, a great fashion designer and punk icon, who said, buy less, choose well. This is also going to harm our planet less. With my street side blog, I'm looking for a particular type. People with imagination who do not get influenced or manipulated by today's fashion industry and who follow their own style people who can actually identify themselves with fashion and to actually stick out. This is what my street side blog is about. It is an opportunity for people to get inspired by other creative people from all over the world and to recognize fashion as a strong communication tool it actually is. Whenever I approach people on the streets for my street side blog with the intention of taking a photo, we engage in a conversation that takes me back to the countries they're from and allows me to learn about their background. 
I really enjoy meeting interesting people from all over the world and asking them questions about themselves and their fashion style. My work allows me to broaden my horizons and it exposes me to many new influences. I meet people, young and old, excited about fashion and happy to share their experiences. And that is exactly what fashion is for. We need to stop this fashion abuse. Thank you.